Welcome to Whitehead Railway Museum. Uh, we have uh, one of the largest collections of railway vehicles in Ireland. Um, the trains are used both out on the main line and go all over Ireland on special high days and holidays, uh, but we also have an excellent museum here at Whitehead. So uh, Guinness is one of the first locomotives uh, uh, acquired by the society in the 1960s. Uh, the locomotive itself built uh, 1919. It was owned by Guinness's Brewery, St James's Gate, and its uh, role was to move wagons from Houston, today's Houston station, uh, into the brewery. So my role as a fireman is to keep pressure in the boiler. So what I try and do is I'm, I'm trying to add coal, so that produces heat, the heat that brings the water to the boil, which gives the pressure. But I have to put that on the grate, and I have to cover all the grate evenly to produce the heat. And then I use the dampers down here at my feet. And I also use the fire hole door and I look at the chimney to the, to the color of the smoke. I'm looking for a light gray smoke. And that means all the combustibles, all the carbon and the coal is igniting above the fire, producing all the heat that rapidly heats the water. And that produces your steam. So the fireman is trying to control all of this control of steam, your water, your pressure, all at the same time, keep balance. It's not chucking coal. <laughs> uh, the driver has the handy job, but don't tell anyone. Um, <laughs> the driver looks, looks to me to, to have the steam pressure at his hand so he has the power. So it is very elemental. It's water, it's coal, it's, it's heat from a fire. It's, it's, it's as elemental as you get, but it's great. It's a, it's a, lit, it's a dance. In the Victorian era, whenever the railways in Ireland were built, um, they were designed as an all-Irish system. Uh, and then in 1921, uh, Ireland was partitioned. And this caused a lot of problems for uh, the railway companies because they now found themselves with lines that went across international borders. But the, the big uh, uh, entrepreneurial opportunity was smuggling, uh, which uh, some people, uh, I assume, took up um, in, a, in a professional, <laughs> dedicated manner, um, but uh, it appears to have been a relatively common thing. The railway companies would have provided mystery tours and day trips. Um, these became very popular um, if they were cross-border trips, um, and people would apparently go up uh, to the booking office and, and say, um, where's the mystery tour going today? Uh, because they wanted to be sure that it was definitely crossing the border. My Grandmother, um, during the Second World War, um, went on a day trip to Dublin and on the way back the customs man boarded the train and asked if anyone had anything to declare and a very well-dressed gentleman pointed at two girls uh, down the carriage and said, I think those two girls have something to declare um, because they'd been showing off the watches they had bought in Dublin uh, with their pocket money and uh, the, the watches were confiscated and they were scolded. Um, they were in tears and whenever the train set off, the man stood up and said, Girls, I'm very sorry, but I needed something to divert attention away from myself. And he then opened up a brief, briefcase full of watches and gave them whatever watch they wanted each. Various places that the public uh, and the crews, uh, the engine crews, would hide um, things being smuggled whenever the customs man came on. Um, the engine drivers would uh, hide things. They would hang it on a hook in the tender behind the engine. They could either hide it under the coal or there was a water tank underneath so they could hook, hook it and um, put it in there. The public, uh, whenever it came into the platform, would use uh, the door handle on the non-platform side and hang their, hang their shopping bag on that. So uh, when the customs man came in and looked, looked at their seat, there, there were no bags, so they couldn't be smuggling anything. Signals are, are used on railways um, to allow trains to move back and forth between stations safely. Um, in the early days, uh, the movement of trains was done by a simple time interval. So the first train would leave, say, at noon, and they would wait 15 minutes before they'd send the second train. That's fine, um, as long as what the first train doesn't break down or there's any problem. Sadly, one day in 1889 in Armagh, there was a very bad accident so that trains don't crash into each other coming back and forth. They used machines called tablet machines or token machines. And um, this particular one's from Coleraine Castle Rock. Uh, and that would, uh, 
the signal man at one end would pull it out, put it in the bag, give it to the driver, and he would then hand it to the signal man at the next signal, and he would put it back in the machine, and that would allow the next token to be pulled out of a machine uh, to go the other way or to in rush hour to, to keep going that way. Um, but uh, very, very safe. They're not used anymore uh, in Ireland, but the last one was used um, in Castle Rock uh, only three or four years ago. Well, this um, goods wagon, um, it's a guard's van. So at the back of every goods train, there would have been a van for the guard and he would have kept his ledger and his oil lamp and uh, all the, per the flags, all the paraphernalia he needed uh, to, for the safe running of the train. Um, and if the train was going down a, a, a steep incline, uh, he could apply the handbrake a little bit to slow, slow things down. This particular one was built in the 1940s in Great Northern Railway Works in Dundalk. And uh, during the Second World War, there were shortages of new materials and everything. So whenever um, it was being restored, we found there are ballast um, tanks underneath uh, and uh, we decided this was like a form of time travel because you could you were pulling these bits out and they were all the bits that had broken in the early part of the war off locomotives and carriages. The, the wagon was restored um, by um, a group called the youth team uh, who came together uh, to learn new skills. We were very lucky to receive a small grant from the Northern Ireland Museums Council for the project uh, and we won an award. Um, for the restoration, which the, the people were very proud of. The Whitehead Railway Museum, it's a great day out. Um, Whitehead Town is a lovely place. Here you can see a number of original bu buildings uh, that we use for various displays and for practical purposes. We do lots of heavy engineering here, so you'll see uh, lots of big cranes and equipment being moved about naturally used to help restore the vehicles with uh, train rides up and down the platform on summer Saturdays. and. Um, a number of uh, galleries uh, and exhibition displays that you can see as well and a lovely tea room. We have lots of information online uh, on the website and also on social media.